And we got in and the very first thing I saw was a black tip reef shark. Can anyone out there tell us what these are? Everywhere we've been have been reefs. Supplies are getting a bit low in terms of fresh food. They're known as also shark fish because they live with sharks. My only concern is that I think I only have two slabs of beer left, so that's a bit of a worry. Oh, of course, we've seen turtles. Just look at this bay, isn't it pretty? Uh, we have just come in over some rocks and found a sandy patch. Uh, dumped the anchor in about 15 meters and backed into about 10 meters. So we've got a good 50 meters of chain out plus the snubber, which will add another five or so meters. And we're pretty much protected from the southeast, which is sort of coming over there. And it's a gorgeous bay. We do know it's very shallow. Uh, plenty of room to swing though, hopefully and supposedly one of the prettiest bays in the Anambas and we can see if you look on Google Earth you can see how clear the water is surrounded by reefs this is actually an island here there's a cut through there which uh, um, yachts can't get through uh, because it's all reefed up but it looks like a really good fun place to explore so looking forward to this So we've just re-anchored, we've put Espa now right in the middle of the bay. Then some clouds came over, so we decided this would be a good opportunity to jump in the dinghy and come ashore. And when I say ashore, it's not particularly big, you can see behind me, uh, it's not a very long beach, but we have been told there are lots of uh, shells here, and in particular cowrie shells. So, as usual, Liz is scouring the shore. This is a clam shell, and this is one of, I mean, hundreds I've seen since we've been in the Anambas washed up on every beach enormous clamshells so if you're looking for a nice big ashtray here's the place beautiful and I think this is quite a new one because he's still joined look so you'd have the two pieces Look. So I thought they were pebbles, but they're obviously some kind of creature at some point. So can anyone out there tell us what these are? As you can see, about the size of my palm. And they have almost fossil-like pattern of a shell inside. What are they? my second snorkel of the day. Um, both times went down for about about an hour each time yeah. I think wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, there's a lot to see because this whole bay is surrounded by reef.
Meanwhile, what are you doing? Uh, I finally resurrected the fishing rod uh, because the last time I used it was on the west coast of Thailand and there were so many fish traps that I lost about four lures didn't catch anything and I just got fed up with it and uh, the final time it ripped the whole thing apart so I've spent the day uh, doing the uh, doing the line putting the line back on rod is all now ready to go and I've got three lures all set up and then there's this one which was made by a Thai fisherman from wire and it has three nasty looking hooks in it and I've just put a skirt over the top no idea what it's going to do but <laughs> we're going to give it a go so when I was fishing for Millie a few days ago, um, the first couple of times I put the line down, something huge came out from under the boat and grabbed it. And uh, it's a remora, and we've had it now for three days. We're now at the third anchorage since we've discovered the remora, Charlie, we've called him, and uh, just made an omelette, scratched up the eggshell, threw them over the side, because I was wondering if he was still here, and he is still here, and this is to let everybody know that remoras like eggshells. So if you have one, feed them an egg. So Liz has cast her rod at the front of the boat, so my job is to make sure Charlie is distracted. And I'm feeding him Millie's food. loves cat food. Okay Liz, I just thought I'd take a little break from the editing and talk a bit more about Charlie. And I know that you've done a bit of research on remoras. Can you tell us a bit more about him please? I looked him up in the only fish book we've got, which is this, is a guide to sea fishes of Australia, and I did manage to get online and have a little bit of a Google. Anyway, remoras, family, there are five different, uh, eight different uh, fish in the remora family. We've identi identified Charlie as a slender sucker fish that grow up to about a metre maximum. So Charlie, or Charlie X, not really sure, is certainly full grown because he's big, she's big, it's a big fish. They're known as also shark fish because they live with sharks and they swim with the sharks, the larger sharks, and they attach themselves to the animal with a modified dorsal fin, which is where the sucker comes from because it's flattened and they push the top of their bodies up onto the host's skin and they stay there. The reason they do this is because they are chancers, they'll scavengers, they'll take little bits and morsels uh, from their host, anything that happens to be around. They're also known for eating parasites and so forth. Sharks apparently don't seem to mind having them there. Maybe they tickle a bit, but they certainly help by clearing up all the nasty stuff. They also swim with whales, um, other large fish, rays and so forth. Nobody knows much about the reproduction of the sucker fish, so it's quite interesting animal that has still got to have a lot of research done. The other thing that was quite interesting when I looked them up on Google, and you can probably find this yourself, is that they have been known to attach themselves to divers and sometimes this can be in a rather embarrassing place. So in the video I think at the time that we recorded it you'd said that he was with us for a few days but when I was editing one of the earlier episodes I had put the camera underwater at the back of the boat and I noticed in some of the footage he was already attached to the hull of the boat. By that point he had already been with us for three weeks I think and as we edit the video now a little bit after our time in the Anambus he was still with us. In fact they are pelagic so they tend to be with the large pelagic animals but the slender sucker fish certainly and I don't know about all the other remoras they are known to come into coastal waters with their hosts and go right into lagoons and go into fat, very shallow areas, so that does make sense. We just had a beautiful morning snorkel, first of all. 
we had to get out of here and we decided to go right round the island of Semut. So first of all, we had to get through this very difficult, very shallow reef. So we're taking a very gentle and careful path through the coral. It's very, very shallow here, but there does seem to be a little pathway. What we understand, according to Navionics, is that this area is navigable, but I think you can see quite clearly that you wouldn't want to bring your yacht here. At the moment we're on Neeps, so it doesn't get too shallow and it doesn't get very deep, so we're okay. The tide's receding at the moment, so we thought we'd better get out here. It's about eight in the morning. I think probably when we're on springs and it's a low tide, I should think some of this is showing. And in fact, some friends of ours went through on their kayaks the other day and they couldn't even get through on their kayaks. So it just shows you just how incredibly shallow it is here. But it's very beautiful. Coral and rocks all around us. You can just make out this path, which uh, Jamie's very carefully steering us down. We've seen a couple of turtles in the last day or so. So we're hoping that we might see some more today. I don't know, let's uh, see what's out there. Um, we picked our way through, that was okay, and that everywhere we've been have been reefs, everywhere. The whole of this area is straddled by reefs and there are bombies as well. On the other side, and as we went round the island, we crossed loads and loads of reefs, but we went to one particular bay that some friends of ours had been to and they said it was the best snorkeling they'd ever had, so we went there. We found one little spot where we were able to drop the anchor in the sand, and we got in, and the very first thing I saw was a black tip reef shark and I nearly got straight back in the dinghy because I'm a little bit nervous when I'm snorkeling but I stuck it out and I stayed down and had the best snorkel I've ever had I think probably. The whole reef was alive with fish, there were motorways of fish going past, streams and streams of them, we saw Napoleon fish everywhere, there were these strange sort of like cross between a butterfly and an angel fish, we're going to have to work out what they were at some point, they were very very pretty bomb is just full of coral, all kinds of coral, all looking really good. A little bit of dead coral here and there, but I should think 80, 90% of it is all beautiful coral. Um, what else do we see? I saw a leopard fish, which Jamie had told me about. We've called it a leopard fish. It's big, this size, but it's covered in what looked like leopard spots. Um, it was a little bit shy, went under a rock. What else did we see? Turtles. Uh, oh, of course, we've seen turtles. We didn't actually manage to snorkel with them, but we've seen two or three turtles now. So this is a good area for turtles, and I understand that on the beaches they do lay their eggs there. So uh, it's been brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Just went down below and said to Liz, I fancy a beer. So opened up the fridge, had myself to a beer, Turned around, looked at the clock and realised it's 11.30 in the morning. Very, very naughty, just broken my... One of my sort of unwritten rules is that I tend not to have a beer before five o'clock, but part of the reason is because we're on a different time scale now, so it gets light about 5.30 and we tend to wake up between 5.30 and 6.30 now. And this morning, of course, with the diving and the uh, snorkeling we've done and going around in the dinghy, around this big island, I don't know how many nautical miles we've done in the dinghy, uh, we've already done more in one morning than we sometimes do in a few days. So it felt well deserved. It's been about two weeks now that we've been here, uh, although I've actually lost count, it feels like an eternity. And this is the nice thing, it's just, being able to relax like this and being under no pressure to do anything at all. As you know, we've, of course, we spend a lot of time on social media and Facebook, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. Well, we haven't done any of that at all. I think Liz has answered a couple of emails. Uh, when we had connection, I downloaded emails, emails and didn't even bother to read them. It's just nice to have that complete break from that and to relax and to do our own thing. Been doing loads of reading, uh, supplies are getting a bit low in terms of fresh food so I think we're down to two eggs and two tomatoes so for the next couple of weeks I think we're going to be uh, getting a bit creative in the galley now. Liz is uh, going to be attempting to make some flatbread for lunch. My only concern is that I think I only have two slabs of beer left so that's a bit of a worry but aside from that it's just nice to just 
detach ourselves from our normal life and of course this is what this kind of cruising is all about this is what being in the anambus is all about is every morning going for a snorkel and feeling energized and then relaxing in the afternoon reading and it's really what it is all about